So if you tell me that that you own a business that's, that's going to grow to the sky, and isn't that wonderful? I don't know whether it's wonderful or not until I know what what the economics are of of that growth, how much you have to put in today, and how much you will reap from putting that in today later on. Good morning, Mo Spence from Waterloo, Nebraska. You've often stated that value and growth are opposite sides of the same coin. Would you care to elaborate on that? And do you prefer a growth company that is selling cheap or a value company with with uh, moderate uh, or better uh, growth pros prospects? Well, well, actually, I think you're, you're, you may be misquoting me, but I, I really said that growth and value, uh, they're indistinguishable. They're, they're part of the same equation. Or really, growth is part of the value equation. So there, I, our position is that there, there is no such thing as as growth stocks or value stocks, uh, the, the way Wall Street generally portrays them as being contrasting asset classes. Growth usually is a chance to, uh, uh, growth usually is a positive for value, but only when the, it, it, it means that by adding capital now, you add more cash availability later on at a rate that's considerably higher than the current rate of of interest. So there is no, we don't, we, we, we calculate into any business we buy what we expect to have happen in terms of the cash that's going to come out of it or the cash that's going to go into it. As I mentioned at Flight Safety, we're going to buy $200 million worth of simulators this year. Our depreciation will probably be in the area of $70 million or thereabouts. So we're putting $130 million above depreciation into that business. Now that can be good or bad. I mean, it's growth, there's no question about it. We'll have a lot more simulators at the end of the year, but whether that's good or bad depends on what we earn on that incremental $130 million over time. So if you tell me that that you own a business that's, that's gonna grow to the sky, and isn't that wonderful, I don't know whether it's wonderful or not until I know what what the economics are of of that growth, how much you have to put in today and how much you will reap from putting that in today later on. And the classic case, again, is the airline business. The airline business has been a growth business ever since, well, you know, that Orville took off. But it's, the growth has been the worst thing that happened to it. It's been great for the American public. But growth has been a curse in the, in the airline business because more and more capital has been put into the business at inadequate returns. Now, growth is wonderful at C's candy because it requires relatively little like incremental investment uh, to sell more pounds of candy. So it's growth, and I've discussed this in some of the annual reports, growth is a part of the equation, but anybody that tells you you ought to have your money in growth stocks or value stocks uh, really does not understand investing. Other than that, they're terrific people. <laughs> Charlie? Well, I think it's fair to say that Berkshire, with a very limited headquarters, staff, and that staff pretty old. Uh, we are especially partial to laying out large sums of money under circumstances where we won't have to be smart again. In other words, if we buy good businesses run by good people at reasonable prices, there's a good chance that you people will prosper us for many decades without more intelligence at headquarters. And you can say, in a sense, that's growth stock investing. Yeah, if you'd asked Wall Street to classify Berkshire since 1965, year by year, is this a growth business or a value business, a growth stock or value stock, you know, who knows what they would have said. But, you know, the real point is that we're trying to put out capital now to get more capital money we're trying to put out cash now to get more cash back later on and if you do that the business grows obviously and you can call that value or you can call it growth but but they're not two different categories and uh, I just cringe when I when I hear people talk about now it's time to move from growth stocks to value stocks or something like that because it, it just doesn't make any sense